Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Automating the Trades. We are here with Jacob, our president at the Graphite Lab. My name is Natalia. In this webinar, we're going to talk through some of our live customer problems. We have a handful of problems ready to go. Um, these are problems that typical businesses in the trades may encounter. Um, we're going to be walking through some different automations, utilizing Zapier, as well as our advanced set of tools to solve these problems. Jacob, a few problems that some of our customers or the other general trades businesses have submitted, and then you can walk us through how you would solve those live. Does that sound good? Thank you so much, Natalia. I'm very excited to hop into these. We want the ability to create a set of task management tasks when certain fields are filled on a form. This one is actually one of my personal favorite workflows that we are able to do inside of our tool. It has to do with a concept called hydration and, and, and data cleaning. This app particularly lands us there. Service Titan recently released the capability for us to programmatically get access to form responses inside of Service Titan, which is really cool. In addition to that, also access to files, access to all sorts of stuff that are inside of a form. I used to work as a dispatcher several years back. This is one of the things I had asked Service Titan for because what it allows you to do is add direct functionality into Service Titan. Because basically what this allows us to do is add functional components, basically allow people to trigger something directly off of what happens on a job inside of Service Titan, which is exciting. One of the major problems with the public version of this Zapier app is the way Zapier works. The way Zapier works is, and we've talked about this in other workflows, with line items, where basically when information comes across, if there are many of a thing, it will list them all out. One of the things that Service Titan does is when data comes from their tool, it is in the form of line items of questions and their answers. The problem with that is let's say you have a 15 questions. One of the things in Zapier that happens is if you want to use the answer to question 13, question 13 is going to be the 13th item in a list of comma separated items. So what you're going to have to do as a, as a layperson is go in and build a workflow that parse it, that basically compares two arrays of comma separated strings if there's no commas in the data that might break that up and make it problematic. It's just like a ton of work and there's a ton of room for error. The public version often goes unused because of that. Here at the Graphite Lab, we've set it up so that we present the form data in several different ways. We'll walk through that. The major thing we're going to talk about here is what is, how do we actually get the data out of a form? The first thing we're going to do here is query forms, form submissions. And this is basically going to allow us to select a form Inside of Service Titan, it's going to pull in all of our available forms. So you see we've got all sorts of them here. We'll do our job completion checklist, and then we can do our submitted on or submitted after. Again, this is our, our date concept. It's only going to pull in 100 records. We want to make sure that those are the most recent ones. So it's submitted before now. And then you have to select an owner type, because one of the things that you could do in Service Titan is have a form on many different objects. And what we're going to want to do, because and you and the cool thing about that is you could automate things that if somebody fills out a form, a job form on a phone call, you could trigger that to be the same form could have two completely different workflows based on the owner of that form. But what we're going to do is we're going to select job because that's the thing that we care about. And we're going to test the trigger. We're going to submissions for that really quickly. It's going to quickly find a job and submit that form on it. All right, so you'll see this one had no submissions. One of the things that you can do if you have a test job is go to any old job. If it's a test job, I'm going to go to that job completion checklist and fill it out. Select random answers, testing notes on the form, and let's say we want the estimated labor hours to be like six. Click save. There we go. It's done. I'm going to test the trigger, and that form should fall in now. We do a lot of really cool things on the form as we go. A lot of the concepts that we've talked about is how are we presenting data to the end user? How are we parsing that data? What are we hydrating into that first step? If we don't hydrate anything into the first step, one thing that you'll have to do is a bunch of different search steps, which is very expensive and means you have to trigger that you'll have costs on every single entity that runs your workflows. We hydrate a bunch of information and clean up the information presented to you in different ways so that you can do that. So here's the form submission. I'll talk about what I mean here. A couple of the things we do at the graph, make sure that this data is really clean for you as an end user. So you'll see here, the form, the first part of this form is the raw stuff coming out of service type. We have units here and units are 
We have units and then we have subunits too. A unit can represent a question or a section. And then if it's a section, it can have subunits. So this becomes really complicated because if I wanted to access date here, I have to access it within two sub line items, which makes it almost impossible to use out the gate. The first thing you'll notice that we implement for our customers is if it is a Whatever the owner is, so you'll notice that we made the owner a job, we'll actually hydrate in all the information about that entity. This isn't something that service time does out the gate, but we'll do that. So if it's a job, this is a really good example. If you only want to fire off a of form submissions where a certain answer is answered and the job has certain information in it, then this is a really good opportunity. For instance, in this form, we have a question about estimated labor hours. And let's say any time that this form submitted and the job is completed, if the estimated labor hours don't match a particular invoice item, have it update that item inside of service time. So that's something we can do. It allows us based on hydrating this information to do those more complex workflows out the gate. We'll go ahead and show that. So we have the customer location. We'll, pop, we'll bring in all that same locate, all, all that same information you can expect on a job trigger. The first thing you'll notice is we have a thing called a values array. Basically, the values array is the first way that we clean up the form data. The values array is basically we take every single question inside of the form response, a top level question or a question inside of a section, and we put it all into an array of items with two values, name and value. This is helpful for people who, who have a bit more complex knowledge and want to iterate through and, and do some complicated code steps. Not everybody wants it this way, which I'll show you an alternative, but the naming convention is basically, if it is just a question, the name will be equal to the question. But if it is a section question, it'll be the section dash, then the name of the question. And then it'll be the answer to that question. So you can see we have all those questions answered here. And they're all coming through that way. The second thing that we do, and, and this is actually really cool, and this is how most people leverage this, is we basically set a question, we, we create an object with a name and a value in it. And the name of that object is the count of the question or section that it represents inside of that units array. So you'll know this job info date question was in section one, question one. And so always, if you reference Q11 value, you will know that you are always referencing the first question in the first section of your form, which is awesome because then I can, instead of having to iterate through every single item and try to find the answer to the question inside of the array, I just reference Q11 value and I have that answer right away, which is super nice. And the way that this naming convention works, it's a section dot the question. And if it is a top level question, not inside of a section, it'll just be placed in that array. So if it's question four, it'll be Q4 instead of Q4 dot something. And you can see that we populate that in there appropriately. So you can see Q4 and then we'll have the name and then that. And then the last way, and this is for our very advanced users, the stringified values is for our more technical engineer, engineering minded people. And basically this is a JSON array of strings. This is a stringified JSON object array. And this isn't relevant to anybody that doesn't know how to code. If you know how to code, you'll notice this is valuable because you can pass it into a code step and do any kind of algorithms you want on it. But let's say you wanna create a task management task. If the answer to the hours question was greater than zero. We have our estimated labor hours. If the answer is greater than zero, we want to go. Oh, that's the other way that we also present this as well. We also set it equal to the name. The name is also then what we pass through. So you can see job info address, which is job info dash address question 1.5 is equal to the value, you can also hard reference it like that. So we want to hard reference estimated labor hours three because it's the third question. The reason there's a three there is you might have multiple questions with the same name that we'll want to handle. So we are going to do estimated labor hours. We know that's always going to be the value of that question is greater than the zero. We're going to want to run our workflow. There we go, it's six. And then here we can go ahead and create a task management task that says, go add that item to the invoice, or we can even directly add it to the invoice as needed. Based on answers to forms, we can go ahead and do that. One of the other cool things that we do is if a form has a file, in it, including the signature, 
we hydrate that information. And so you can use that in other steps. So let's say if a form has a photo, one of the major tools we have is the ability to parse text from a photo. So one of the things a lot of people set up is like form contains a photo of the equipment tag. If that field exists, grab that file and send it to our tool, which will parse the equipment details, check to see if that equipment's already on the location. If it isn't, add that in service tag in. So it's a very common workflow that a lot of our customers leverage because we can actually hydrate those files for our customers. Just one of the ways we can make these forms work for you. Forms are cool. They're one of the things that I'm really invested in because they allow us to really create workflows where the where technicians can trigger complicated workflows with simple answers to questions. And you can require that the technician fill that form out before they leave the job. So it's the only thing in Service Titan you can force your technicians to do. And then you can force that to have a known outcome, which basically means that the margin for human error goes to near zero because you can force things to happen and have technology handle it from there. So a lot of people leverage it to create estimates, to add things to jobs, to make sure that certain task workflows happen. And so they're a robust tool that allows us to handle complex workflows. Oh, thank you so much for that, Jacob. Yeah. Everyone watching, if you are interested in getting any of these problems solved for you and your business, please feel free to reach out. Our contact form is always in the description as well as in our bio. We'd be more than happy to hop on a call and chat through how we can help you out with problems like this and other ones too.